welcome to the Paper Snob. This is Tara. Today I'll be working on the Iron Crafter Challenge. This is a challenge that I co-host with Anna from Peacecraft Love. I will have links to her Facebook community group below where you can find this challenge each month. Each month we choose an item from our stash that is not getting enough attention. Um, we've done washi and Nouveau drops and ribbon and brads, you know, fastener type things, etc. Um, this month we are actually doing stamps. And so I do have a pile of stamps sitting here on my desktop. Pull out to play with. Um, some of them are actually brand new. This set I don't think I've used. This set I've stamped with once or twice. Um, plus, I have a photo of my best friend with her kids stamp block. And then some scraps from one of my hip kits. So this is also going to go for the Baby Got Scraps hop as well. This is, I believe, last year's probably September or October kit. It's one of my favorites. It's got wooden houses and little um, chipboard buttons and lots of just fun stuff to play with. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on my background and then we will get this layout moving along. Be right back. I meant to say this at the beginning and I forgot. This is also going to be used for the Baby Got Scraps hop that is ongoing for the month of January. And like many have said during their videos for that hop, we could all do this all year long because scraps are a big thing. So what I'm doing here is I am taking Wild Honey and... Um, I can't see what the other one says now, but I'm taking the wild honey, adding a little bit of water to it, and I am using the packaging technique to put um, color onto this white cardstock. It started out and it was a little lighter than I liked, so I added more and used less water to get a, a richer color. And then I'm gonna do the same with this second color, which I think is peacock feathers. And I'm gonna do this very same thing. I'm not gonna put as much of the blue on here because blue and yellow make green. And I'm really not wanting to get a whole bunch of green. I just wanna add a little bit of the blue here. The photo I'm using has orange and this shade of, a darker shade of this blue on it. And I just want to kind of bring out a little bit of color because I'm also going to be pulling blue in with my pattern paper scrap. So I pulled out all of these stamps and I'm going to just tell you right now I don't use every set that I pull. And this particular stamp, when I get it onto my background, which I apologize, I am shaking my ring light to death. I'm gonna have to maybe buy a floor model because it just shakes. But back to this, I end up covering that up a lot more than I intended and it's okay. You can still kind of see it through my embellishments and stuff, but if I had known that, I might have pulled it down lighter and not done a second generation um, stamp up at the top. So what I really wanted for this um, stamping project is I really wanted to make my leaf stamp, back the background stamp that I am currently inking up with four different colors to be the star. And I personally believe that I accomplished that. I am using Distress Ink, which is not an ink that I usually stamp with, especially not if I'm wanting clean, crisp images. But because this is a mixed media background, I am not worried as much about the clean, crisp images. And I also think the use of the ink on the white paper first with the packaging technique kind of helps it not be as splotchy as you would normally get with Distress Ink. Now again, um, I would use my Pink Fresh Studios inks rather than the Distress inks if I wanted crisp images, but 
I'm not looking for that here. And I am gonna stamp this, I believe, four different times. I am not doing any second generation stamping here, and I'm being really random about um, where I put the inks on the stamp. Now, you may note that I have the mini ink pads, and I did that when I first started buying the Distress inks. I wasn't sure how much I would use them, so I bought the mini, mini ones because I thought, well, I probably won't use these very much, and I don't want to waste a bunch of money on the full-size pad because they might dry out. Well, I use them tons, which is good, and, you know, if they start drying out, I am going to have to either break down and buy a bigger one or just buy re-inkers because these are very loved in my stash. I use them mostly for ink packaging techniques and, um, you know, mixed media stuff. So I've got the four images on here. And you probably see that I'm spending a lot of time patting that, that down. And the reason for that is I forgot to bring my little, I have a little tool from, I think, Stampendous. And it it's basically looks like a, um, those hockey table um, things that you send the pieces back and forth. I don't play sports, not even those kind, but it looks kind of like those hockey table thingies. And um, anyway, it helps put pressure in the middle of a larger stamp like that. But I forgot to move it, and I didn't want to stop my video to grab it. So I am cutting a four and a quarter by six and a quarter um, piece of pattern paper from that scrap that I have and I am going to use my distress tool and I'm going to distress the edges. I am also going to distress my photo. Now I've had a couple people ask me why I do that. One, I like the way it looks when you distress a photo. Two, sometimes you don't have room for multiple mats and Distressing that photo edge just a little bit exposes that white core and kind of gives you the look of a tiny sliver of a white mat. So that is why I do that. Um, you know, in this day and age, when we're dealing with digital photos that we can print over and over or ask our best friend, since that's my best friend's photo that I got from her, to send you a digital copy so that you can reprint it, it's not a big, big deal to distress the edges. Now, I am going to say that if this had been a photo that I don't have access to a digital copy, I probably wouldn't do that, such as photos of my great-great-grandmother would not distress that photo at least not without scanning it first okay so done with that now I'm just going to kind of play around with the embellishments that I have and I'm going to tell you right now that sticker doesn't stay I do pause the camera and pull it off um I do rip the die cut a little bit that I'm using there but I just flip it around since it's part of it's being hid hidden underneath my photo so here you can see that I've um started adding stuff and I've taken off that um, die cut and sticker from my background. I did not tear up my background. I just managed to get it all off. So probably I'm looking for that die cut at this point and it's right there. What a goofball. So I know that I really wanted that to be there and I thought I was going to use the alphas from this hip kit for my title and instead I use Favorite Photo and Hello Autumn um, chipboard pieces. Now, I'm just going to start adding bits and pieces here, and I end up using quite a few of these chipboard pieces on my layout. My goal is to keep the focus on my photo, but also not to take away too much from that stamped background that I created. And so I'm just kind of putting just a little bit here and there on the layout. I also thought that I might use um, those buttons that I had in the kit. And, you know, I just didn't really care for those either. I don't even think I'd try them out. But I am going back to the acetate st stickers that are clear or transparent. And I am kind of playing with those and adding little bits and pieces here. 
Um, I really have a hard time using stuff like that. So for me, it was just really easy to stick a few on here. I'm still looking for different pieces. You know, I don't always come into a video knowing how things are going to turn out. This is one of those videos. I am literally just playing with the stuff on my desk. I knew what I wanted to use. I knew kind of what my background should look like. But as far as embellishments, I really didn't plan them. And so I'm digging through what's left of the, the die cut pieces in this kit. There aren't a whole lot left. And, you know, technically this isn't really a fall layout. The photo, um, I believe, was taken in November of 2015. And um, it's just a family photo. And it is what she put in her Christmas cards that year. And so I don't think I use anything from the first pack of die cuts that I open up, but the second pack, which has all the beautiful little gold pieces, um, like they're foiled with gold, I use quite a few of those. And of course, as I'm digging through it, I'm like, girl, you need to save some of the paper from this kit for that apple picking layout that you want to do because there's tons of apples in this thing and that weird croissant. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with the weird croissant. But anyway, I am just kind of digging around, trying to decide what I want to use. I didn't like the leaf and the flower, and I end up finding a couple little um, like branchy pieces, and I like those. So those are gonna stay on there, and that makes me super happy. So now I have glued everything down, added foam adhesive where I need to, and um, I am going to be wiggling the table a lot again because I am going to be putting some splatters around um, my background and on some of the ephemera pieces. I covered up some of it, especially the little journaling that I did. And here at first, I kind of have trouble getting the splatters on here. It's just for whatever reason, this particular brush isn't isn't working so I switch out brushes and add more ink here first but then I I do get annoyed and I switch out brushes so yeah I think yep right there I, I this is the brush that I usually use for this and I hear that if you use a fan brush that it works awesome and maybe I should just raid my makeup brushes and pull that fan brush in from there. So what I'm doing with each color is I am cleaning it off my glass mat and I am wiping my paintbrush down between colors. It's not perfectly clean and that is okay. I am just trying to get some of these splatters and I'm using the same four colors of ink that I also stamped with. And I get quite a few splatters on here. Um, this is just one of my favorite things to do. And if you've watched me very often, you know that I do this um, quite a bit. Sometimes I do it off camera, but today I decided to do it on camera. And what I like about this other paintbrush is I get a little bit bigger splatters than I normally would. And I, that I think is what I was dealing with and oh shaking that table. I'm so sorry um, I'm gonna have to fix that. Yep. Didn't wipe my paintbrush off in between I need to do it again And I have decided to go with a darker color of blue here And I think this is mermaid lagoon that I end up pulling out here And it is basically just a little bit of a shade darker I'm also being careful not to add as much water so that I don't dilute the shade too much. But you know, you get quite a few um, colors. And then the very last color that I bring in is um, my Uncharted Mariner Distress Oxide Spray. That is a color that sits on my desktop because I absolutely adore that color and I have a I have I think lost shadow or hickory smoke on my desktop as well as my favorite white I'm not using the white or the um I think it's hickory smoke neither of those get put on this layout but um I do use the uncharted mariner I love the distress oxide sprays they are probably my absolute favorite product and they get used quite a bit all right i got my layout completely finished 
I did quite a few splatters. I used the leaf stamp the most and ended up covering that splotchy stamp here and here up with my other stamping, but that's okay. You can still see the background a little bit and um, I didn't put too many embellishments on here. So you can still see my beautiful stamping and the splatters and you know, the focus is on my photo, which is my goal. I'm about to get a kitty. Yep, there's kitty paws. He's trying to maneuver out of the way. <laughs> anyway, um, there will be a playlist in the description box below, as well as a list of all of the creators who are hopping along with us today for Iron Crafter Challenge. Make sure that you click on that and leave everybody some love. This is one of my favorite hops because we can get creative with a product that we feel is not getting enough attention in our stash. Stamps are something that I seem to collect rather than use. And so this has been a great way to pull out my stamping supplies and enjoy just kind of playing. And that is kind of my goal here. I want to thank you so much for coming to my channel today. I really appreciate those of you who take the time to like, comment, and or subscribe to my channel. You guys are amazing and I really appreciate you. You guys have a great Friday and a great rest of your weekend. Bye.